Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, it's working. Cool. So, uh, let's start. We'll talk about building websites that will eventually work on Mars. <laughs> and uh, let's start with the uh, introduction. I'm Slobodan Stojanovic, and uh, I'm CTO and partner of a uh, small Canadian Serbian company. We're building web applications and uh, mobile, uh, mobile uh, applications and things like that. I'm also organizing JavaScript meetups in Belgrade, Serbia. Um, I'm doing a lot of op open source things, so you can see all those things on uh, my GitHub account. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter. And before we continue, I would like to know something about you. So first, uh, did anyone of you ever uh, visited Mars? <laughs> no? OK. I guess Elon Musk is not in the audience, right? No? OK. I'm the expert today, so <laughs> we can continue. Uh, this talk will not be deep technical, because um, some of those things will definitely work completely different on Mars <laughs> in a few years. But uh, it's more uh, idea is more to explore some of the today technologies that will that we can use and build the websites for some extreme situations. And let's start from the most important question that you probably have. It's not this one. <laughs> it's why Mars. So let's see what do we know about Mars. First, it's obvious. It's a planet. Uh, approximately, it's the same land mass as Earth. Uh, it's much smaller. It's just 10% of mass of the Earth, but uh, there's no oceans, so land mass is almost the same. That's nice. Mars day is just 40 minutes longer than uh, day on Earth, so it's really useful when you have a deadline or something like that. You have 40 more minutes every day, and our plants uh, will like that because uh, length of day and night will be almost the same. Then, Mars year is almost twice longer than a uh, year on Earth. It's probably a bit more uh, bureaucracy at the end of the year or something like that. And if you're Santa Claus, you, you have <laughs> a longer vacation. But again, it's not the big problem. Temperature can be 20 degrees. It's nice. And gravity is only 37% of uh, Earth's uh, gravity. So you can jump from the second floor and we will not be hurt. So you don't need to wait for, for the elevator and things like that. And most important thing, there, there are signs of liquid water on Mars. It's not just that uh, Mars have two moons. So just imagine the night on Mars. Also, uh, the biggest um, mountain in the solar system is on Mars. So it's nice, right? But there's a few problems. First one is uh, just 18 missions so far were successful. That's not a big problem because our technology is progressing, so eventually it will be better and better. But of course, that's not, that's not the biggest problem. Uh, it can be really cold on Mars, a bit colder than in Canada, <laughs> but that's not the biggest problem we have on Mars because uh, there's a large dust storms. Uh, they can cover whole planet and uh, uh, they can last for a few months. But again, that's not the biggest problem on Mars. There's a radiation, but that's not the biggest problem. There's no atmosphere, so <laughs> you're not able to survive. And um, why would anyone <laughs> go to Mars, right? Uh, our planet is great, right? But if you ask dinosaurs, it's not that great. It's uh, every few million if, of years, uh, there's uh, some events that uh, cause mass extinction of uh, animal species. So we are engineers. And uh, if you want to keep everything that we did so far, we basically need to do a backup and to, to move uh, to one more data center. <laughs> and uh, so let's see our options. First, um, of, of course, we are not able to go that far because our technology is not that advanced yet. But uh, first, we can go. To, uh, all other planets are much worse than Mars. First is Mercury, and it's it can be very, very hot. Uh, there's no atmosphere, so during the summer, it's too hot. We're not able to survive that. Actually, during the day. And during the night, it's too cold, so we, we are not able to survive that. And radiation, of course, it's too close to the sun. Then Venus. Uh, 
uh, atmosphere is too thick on Venus, so it's even worse. Uh, we're not able to, to breathe, and uh, it's too hot. And actually, there, uh, there's a perfect conditions of, of uh, on Venus. It's on 50 kilometers from the uh, from the ground. But we are not that good with building floating cities, so that's not working for us. Then, for example, Moon. Uh, but that's not working because if anything happens to, to Earth, Moon don't have water and things like that, so it will not solve our problem. Then Mars, it's not perfect, but we can make it work. And then after that, all the other planets are too far, and of course, uh, we don't know much about them, and we don't think that we can live on them. There, there are some uh, satellites on Jupiter and things like that that can possibly have water and things like that, but we really don't know. Uh, that much about them. So this uh, technical presentation, so just imagine that you have some website and that people are using that website and let's forget about that right now and go back to Mars. Uh, Mars is the only planet uh, inhabited by robots only and I guess it's the only planet inhabited by robots that are taking selfies in the universe. <laughs> and um, then one day in probably next 10 or 15 years this guy creates one big rocket and puts some people on it. Then uh, launch that rocket, and uh, then uh, he launch another. Uh, the the big part of this rocket will go back to the Earth, take another uh, top part uh, with the fuel, and then in the uh, before the, the, uh, he launch everything to to Mars, he'll refuel his small rocket part a few times and then uh, that small part will go to Mars. And a few mon uh, months later, uh, we'll watch that on TV, probably we'll tweet about that and things like that. And it will happen something like uh, landing on Moon, just with social networks and everything. And finally, we'll have some people on Mars. And eventually they will build some small cities and then after that some much larger cities and things like that. So. Do you know what's this? It's Maslow hierarchy of needs. Basically, it says that uh, people need uh, something to breathe, food, water, and things like that. And after that, they need safety, belonging, and things like that. And eventually, we'll have all those things on Mars. And of course, there's one more thing that we need, and that's Wi-Fi, of course. So eventually, someone will bring internet on Mars. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you remember you have a website, and one day um, you receive something like this. And of course, uh, you answer on that. And then you receive something like this. <laughs> and you don't have an idea of what's happening. So you figure out that uh, you have a problem with someone that is running your website on Mars. And since you don't have uh, an idea of what's the problem, you start digging through the the conditions and everything on Mars, and um, let's see. First thing that you see is the problem with distance. So Mars is uh, very far away, uh, and uh, light needs uh, 3 to 22 minutes uh, to come from, actually 3.5 to 22 minutes to come from Earth to Mars. So if we, uh, if we just assume that uh, we can communicate on the speed of light, actually close to the speed of light, uh, HTTP round trip will be 7 to 44 minutes. It's not really great for loading websites, I guess. And uh, the, the other problem is when you have uh, planets, uh, when Mars is uh, rotated or something like that, and satellites are not, uh, they don't have direct uh, contact, uh, there's no communication at all. Or if the planets are on opposite side of Sun, you're not able to communicate. So that's why your website is not working. And of course, uh, what's the thing that we can do if latency is the problem? I guess we can deploy everything in the different AWS uh, data center, but unfortunately the data center on Mars is not finished yet, so we need to find the, the other solution. So basically, we're not able to communicate uh, in real time. We're not able to use uh, Skype, WhatsApp, anything like that. We're not able to talk over phone because there's a huge latency. And we don't have enough servers, so what can we do if we don't have enough servers? Maybe go serverless? No. 
that will not work in space. <laughs> but uh, before we solve those problems, let's actually before we see what's a uh, possible solution, let's see actually how do we communicate it on Mars, actually in space. Uh, you probably saw Martian movie, and it's not much better than this. Uh, basically, we're communicating with radio waves. It's the, <laughs> the same radio waves, uh, waves that you have in your car and things like that. So just imagine that you're communicating with a different planet with the same radio that you have in your car. It's not that great because uh, you need to have huge receiver receivers on Earth and uh, signal needs to be really precise and uh, I don't know, you, you're not able to send that much data. There's another thing called interplanetary internet and uh, it's really, in, it, it's in early days still and they're just testing that. And it's based on the new protocols, of course, because as I said, uh, HTTP will not work that great with uh, huge latency. So they developed uh, delay and disruption uh, tolerant networking. And um, those networking are not just for communication between the planets and uh, in space. It's uh, even for some places on Earth that are that that don't have uh, the I don't know the enough. Uh, a uh, good internet connection and everything. So, for example, North Pole or even Africa or Southeast Asia or something like that. And, that. and let's see how it works. Uh, on standard internet, whenever you send a package, you'll receive something and know that the package is received. And, uh, of course, if some package fails, uh, you'll just resend that same package. We'll see that right now. Next one. Come on. It's a bit long GIF, sorry. So uh, we'll just try to resend the same package, but that's not working with Mars because you need to wait for a long time and you don't know if uh, how far are the planets and everything. So let's see how delay tolerant network is working. Each of the nodes on your internet uh, can store on your actual interplanetary internet can store the data. So you're you're storing the data and sending to the next node, and when you receive the feedback that uh, data is received, then you just can delete the, your copy. And if something fails, you don't need to, uh, to send everything from the beginning. That node will just resend the package. And uh, let's go back to web development because I'm not that good with um, networking. And maybe you are, but it's not that interesting to me. Let's go uh, back to JavaScript and see what we can do from uh, with our current technology uh, to solve those problems. First, um, obvious thing will be uh, to use service workers uh, to make uh, your website work, uh, working uh, offline. And uh, you, can, uh, you can use them in most of the browsers today. Not, not most, but a lot of browsers today. But uh, here's how it works. Uh, basically, service workers are just a proxy between your web application, your browser, and the internet if it, if it exists. And they can help you to, to have fully offline experience. Uh, you can intercept network requests, so you can cache the network requests and everything. And if you have something locally, you don't need to hit the server and return the data. Uh, you can add push notifications. And we'll see later there's a background sync. It's nice. And it's easy to do that. Uh, there will be no uh, that much code, but let's see just a few examples. So for example, it's, it, uh, you just need to register uh, your service worker, worker. It's just a separate JavaScript file. And in that file, we just uh, define which uh, files we want to cache and uh, add some event listeners, and that's it. When we uh, receive event, uh, those events, we know that our uh, website is cached and we can use it uh, fully offline. And that works, as I said, in some browsers. And there's still some browsers that are not supporting this, but eventually they will. Um, as we saw, the big problem is latency. So we don't want to hit our server that often. Um, what, what can we do to, I don't know, have uh, less API calls? We can use something like GraphQL. Uh, do you know what's GraphQL? Cool. Did you work with GraphQL? Ooh, cool. <laughs> then I'll skip my <laughs> part. I'm kidding. So GraphQL is basically uh, you can run the query on the front end and send that to, uh, to a server, and it will just uh, return the data that you need. And uh, 
Fortunately, I don't have much on GraphQL, so <laughs> just listen to his talk about more details. Basically, if you if you ask for user with a profile picture and uh, some different things, it will return exactly the same uh, thing in JSON. So you can bundle more things in a single API call. So for example, if you want to show something on your mobile phone, uh, you can uh, just ask for everything that you have on one page. It's probably not that perfect on the server side because uh, it will take uh, more time on your server to, to generate all those things, but uh, it's much better experience on your front-end side because uh, users don't need to wait until you hit the server 10 times and get the user, then profile picture, then some other things. And when you have data uh, and you have some local caching, mm, I guess you need some kind of the database on the JavaScript, actually in your browser. There's a few options, and we'll just uh, mention one. It's IndexedDB. It's basically a low-level API for client-side database. And uh, you can store a lot of things, uh, even files. I don't think you should do that most of the time, but you can. And uh, the idea is to, to be able to search that uh, very quickly with indexes. And basically, what's index? Uh, IndexedDB, it's key value storage. It's a transactional database model, so everything is transaction. It's mostly async. Uh, some of the things were not async, but they are deprecated now. It's using DOM events just to notify you when something is ready and things like that. And it's basically just a NoSQL database. And um, I will not show the code for IndexedDB because its API is not that perfect. It's, it's really low level and it's ugly. But fortunately, there are some other libraries built on top uh, IndexedDB that we can use. One of them is PouchDB, which is uh, just a client-side implementation of CouchDB. Uh, do you know what's CouchDB? Cool. So uh, basically, you can have the copy of CouchDB in your browser, store everything uh, locally, and whenever there is a server connection, it can just replicate everything to your CouchDB or PouchDB or any other compatible uh, database on the server. And basically, with CouchDB, you, you can even build the application without the backend, just with the database, because database have enough logic and it even comes with some uh, nice uh, web view like uh, PHP MyAdmin for, for the database uh, by default. So you don't need to install anything special. CouchDB is really nice and it's really easy to use. As you can see, uh, and the, the good thing is that you can go to PouchDB website and just uh, open the inspect element and uh, actually open the console and play with it because it contains the, uh, the PouchDB. So you can put some things in the database, you can listen for changes, and finally you can just set where to replicate to at or where to replicate from. So you can replicate just some things and you can do really cool things with it. Of course it's not the silver bullet, it will not solve all the problems. Sometimes you can use some other implementations of uh, client size, uh, side uh, databases, but it will work fine. But uh, why stop there? We can do background sync. We, I just mentioned that in the beginning, but what's that? It's, uh, so even if you don't have connection, your browser can uh, wait for connection and just send your request to the server when you have a reliable connection again. And uh, you can continue. Just imagine that you can continue using, for example, Facebook completely offline. And you can post, uh, even post the new, I don't know, uh, timeline updates and things like that. And you'll see like uh, them posted, and they will be synced on the server whenever you have the internet connection. So even on your plane, you can send a tweet or something like that. And when you're back online, it will just send that in the background. And uh, you don't need anything special for that because it works in the browser itself. And uh, it's using service workers again. And you basically just need to, to do a few more things. Uh, you need to re uh, register a uh, one-off sync. And you need to wait, wait until something is ready. But if you're able to do background sync, why wouldn't we be able to do uploading and downloading because right now the problem is that uh, if you're caching some big file and you turn off your browser those big uh, big assets will uh, not be cached uh, this is not available yet but it's uh, it will be eventually and uh, 
this is the things that it should uh, do. First, it should enable background caching of multiple resources. You can uh, just uh, cache some big files uh, in the background and it will defer all those things uh, directly to your operating system because uh, even if your browser is off, it should continue doing that. Um, so your operating system will be able to fetch the things and beside that, uh, it should be able to show you the progress of that. And finally, uh, we don't need to solve all those, th all those things in the browser. We'll uh, let our operating system to deal with uh, poor connections and things like that. And uh, it will allow us to do something if uh, that caching is uh, failing. And uh, my daemon is still lost. I hope you're not lost because finally we are getting to the most important thing and that's peer-to-peer -peer connection. Uh, so on Mars, we'll not have servers. Actually, we'll have some servers, but not enough. And probably NASA or some other agencies will use those servers and the internet to communicate with Earth. So if you want to, I don't know, uh, chat with someone and things like that, it's much better to do that we have peer-to-peer -peer connection. And let's see what we can do uh, with peer-to-peer -peer in the browser directly. Uh, do you know what, what is WebRTC? Cool. <laughs> so basically, WebRTC still requires some server just to connect you with other people. But when you're connected, uh, the communication is completely peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. So you don't need server anymore to send something like that, uh, messages and things like that. You don't even need the internet access. You need to be on some local network or something like that. So uh, there's three things that uh, WebRTC allows us. First is media streams. Uh, and that allows us to build something like a uh, web version of Skype and things like that. So we can uh, do voice calls or video calls directly via peer-to-peer -peer connections. Uh, after that, we have RTC peer connection to, to control who is connected to everything, uh, actually to, to our, uh, we, we can set channels and things like that and we have peer connection, we can control who is, uh, who is available, who is not available anymore. And basically there's a most important uh, thing for us and that's data channel. That allows us to send anything, basically anything, not just the video or audio files, we can send even, uh, actually not just the video or audio streams, we can send uh, streams of data and things like that. And uh, it's still not that uh, nice, but it's not that uh, hard. If you check, uh, there's a few nice tutorials on that, so we'll not stay that long on this, but basically it's not that hard to, to build some kind of peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer chat and, uh, with this. You just need a small server, for example, in Node or something like that, that will connect peers. And uh, why I think WebRTC is really important. First, um, it allows us to build something like this. Not sure if you heard about this, but uh, it's an awesome uh, implementation of uh, BitTorrent directly in browser. And uh, it's written completely in JavaScript. It's using WebRTC. And it's doing peer-to-peer -peer connection and sending the data peer-to-peer, -peer, just like uh, WebTorrent. But you don't need to install any uh, separate software for that. You have everything you need in your browser. Of course, it's not working in all the browsers yet, but you can use it in Chrome, uh, Firefox, and some others. And you don't need any plugins, as I said, uh, extensions and things like that. It's You just need to open the website, and that's it. And why do I think this is important? Well. Just imagine, this is from their website, but it's a great explanation. Just imagine that we have a peer-to-peer -peer YouTube. So you don't need to upload files. You can simply uh, have one file and I can stream it uh, directly from you. If more people have that file, I'll stream it faster. And of course, it's not just for pirate bait things <laughs> and downloading the movies and things like that, but we can really share the files. And this is important for Mars because will not have the st uh, stable internet connection. So if we want to uh, watch some, for example, uh, Netflix series or something like that, uh, one person can have it and other people from Mars can uh, simply use the browser to, to stream it without con uh, contacting the server or con uh, asking Earth to send that to Mars. And uh, it's really easy to use it. 
and uh, I think you should try to, to build something with it. You just need to uh, require WebTorrent. Of course, this is a node, but uh, if you're using Webpack or Browserify or something like that, you'll have all those things in the browser. And then uh, you know th those magnet links for your file, uh, for torrent files. You just need that link and you can stream, uh, you can load that uh, with a peer to peer connection. And if you append that to, your, uh, to body tag or something like that, you can play the video or whatever. So it's really easy to try that. And if you're able to load any kind of data through the, through the internet, why wouldn't we be able to load full, uh, full websites, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript directly from the internet? And uh, basically we are, but we are not using that that much. And I want to show you something. It's a really cool thing called Hyperdrive. And again, it's Node library, so you can install it easily. Uh, it works in the browser, of course. Basically, uh, Hyperdrive is a file sh sharing network. So you can build something like Dropbox or something like that completely without the servers. It's not the serverless like with AWS Lambda or something like that. It's full serverless. You just you still need those small uh, that small server that will connect the peers, but without that, you don't need anything else. And basically, it works on rep uh, file chunking. That's um, because if you want to share some video file and things like that, we don't want to to have uh, chunks with the same size all the time. Uh, that will not work. We want to, to split our video file in some uh, meaningful uh, parts. So even if you get some part, you can stream that part and wait for, for the next one. So some frames and things like that. And basically, uh, it's built on, uh, it's verified with Merkle trees. And I want to show you what's that. Basically, what's the problem with uh, WebTorrent? Uh, with WebTorrent, if you have some file and if you change a small part of the file, uh, it will, uh, WebTorrent will not know that that's the same file. It will think that it's a completely different file, so you need to stream it again. With Merkle trees, it works completely different. So you have data blocks. Each data block can be, for example, one frame of your uh, video or one line of your uh, text file or something like that. And you hash uh, two of those chunks. Actually, you hash all of, uh, all of those chunks, then you hash each two of them, and you hash, uh, it's like a triangle. You're hashing two by two until you get to the top of the pyramid. It's really great because if you just add one new uh, new file, you just need to hash that with, uh, with the, uh, the parent of the previous two files and up to the top. And uh, anyone will be able to, uh, to verify that this is a valid file really easily because it just uh, need to validate the height of the of that triangle. So basically, uh, Hyperdrive is peer-to-peer -peer data distribution pro protocol, and it's used uh, by that project. I'll show that project a bit later, and it consists of two uh, parts. First one is Hypercore, which is the protocol for Swarm and uh, distributing append-only logs, because everything works on append-only logs. You can just add things. You're not able to delete things from log. Of course, you can say that something will not be the part any, uh, anymore, but uh, you have the log, how everything happens, so you, so you can go through that log. And uh, that's the first part. And the other part is Hyperdrive, which is a file system uh, a protocol built on top of uh, Hypercore. That's the thing with uh, chunks and everything, because for the first thing for hypercore you can build even chat and things like that without uh, with this uh, without servers so because it's append only log you can just append new messages for, for the chat and it will work and I mentioned that project um, it's basically um, something um, file system built on top of uh, hypercore and hyperdrive and uh, it's uh, built for uh, for science but you can use it for everything. You can basically install the application. They have applications now for Mac, Windows, and Linux, and uh, drag and drop files and send links, and people get uh, can download that files uh, even without internet connection if you're uh, connected to some local network or things like that. And uh, for example, it's great for uh, for science because 
uh, you can share a large files and even if you change some uh, some parts of uh, those files it will not re-download everything it will just download the new things and it can also uh, see some hashes that also uh, already exist in some other files and uh, reuse them instead of downloading everything so it can save a lot of time there's other implementations uh, that are doing something similar there's interplanetary file system not sure if anyone heard about that cool so uh, it's something similar uh, it's a set of protocols that allows you to uh, to, sh uh, to share your files uh, completely uh, offline and peer to peer actually peer to peer so you can use everything offline and they have nodes for interplanetary file systems a uh, file system all over the world and you can set up your node and you decide what do you want to uh, uh, actually what do you want to sync with your node so no one is able just to send you some uh, files that are not legal and things like that without you allowing that but basically you can uh, the idea is to distribute the internet so we don't have one internet uh, that can that someone controls but to have some peer-to-peer -peer internet that no one is able to just remove things from it uh, easily that can be dangerous of course because some people can use it for some bad things but uh, the idea of internet was to have a global network that is fully distributed today internet is not distributed uh, actually we have servers and we have people that control those uh, websites and web applications and things like that and uh, there's of course a lot of other problems that we need to solve and uh, of course most of them don't have uh, any connection to our browsers but for example timestamps uh, we are not able to use timestamps anymore because uh, time works differently on Mars we can probably use Earth timestamps but it will be hard and also if you just bring your laptop to Mars it will not work as you expected because it will still uh, measure time in Earth uh, days and things like that so we need to solve that other thing is uh, storing and checking the sessions because for example if you want to check your Facebook from from Mars how do you do that how how do Facebook validate that your request is valid because you you need some kind of session and you're on different planet and maybe you don't have internet connection at that actually connection between planets at that moment so that's really hard of course security and privacy it will not be a big problem in the beginning but um, if someone is using uh, pirate uh, if someone is downloading pirate music or things like that how do you control that and how <coughs> actually if everything is peer-to-peer -peer, how do you control uh, privacy and uh, security on Mars so that will be a big uh, problem and of course uh, one other big problem is how to test that how to test that extreme situations we can simulate some of them but it's really hard to to test all those situations that we are not uh, we don't have those problems uh, on our planet right now actually we don't have those problems in in the uh, in the way that we are uh, using our internet most of the time so what's the message of this talk um, is the message uh, I don't know uh, we now know what to use to, to build some kind of uh, Instagram for Mars or something like that so Matt Damon can share the images of his potato or something like that actually no uh, the main message of this talk is that uh, even the applications that we are building uh, right now are uh, they're not working everywhere uh, on this planet right now and soon we'll have even more planets eventually so for example if you want to uh, internet works perfectly here or anywhere in Europe but if you are in Asia Southeast Asia or even just in Australia uh, if your server is in uh, North America latency is huge so even if they have normal uh, internet connection it will work much much slower because there's a huge latency in Africa and uh, some countries in Southeast Asia it's really hard to, to load some things uh, for example uh, Opera Mini uh, you probably remember Opera Mini is still working in some of those country, uh, countries because it just uh, cache uh, your Facebook and things like that remove the big images and big files and make the minified version of it so people can load that or for example on North Pole and things like that there's a people that are working there and they're not able to, to use the all the website that we are building or 
you uh, I guess you all know what happened with AWS just two days ago. So S3 st uh, stopped working and half of the internet stopped working. So we have a lot of extreme situations that we need to solve even on this planet and soon we'll have completely different uh, things to, to work on. So uh, people are trying to explore the space again and uh, for a long time there were no big um, uh, people were not. Uh, there, there were no big missions to to go to other planets or even moon and things like that. But now again, uh, there's a private companies that are uh, pushing uh, exploration of the space, and people will eventually be on Mars at some point. Maybe they will not live on Mars, but again, we we'll, we need a better way of communication in space because just imagine that uh, Voyager uh, or some other uh, spacecrafts. Are launched in uh, 70s, and we still uh, get the data from it, and we are getting the data via uh, via radio waves that are really, really. Uh, mm, they don't contain enough information that we need. So, and we now have uh, more powerful devices in our pockets than the the computers that took people on uh, on the moon. So we need to find a better way to build our uh, applications. Uh, so they can work in some extreme situations and of course to eventually work on Mars. And that was all. Questions? <laughs> Thanks. Any questions? Uh, just a second. Uh, did I work with the IPFS? I'll try to repeat the question. So, have you worked with uh, IPFS uh, at all? Uh, yeah, a bit, not not that much. But I met uh, guys from IPFS uh, on some conference, so they showed me a lot of things. Uh, I more worked with uh, with Hyperdrive and uh, that implementation. But IPFS is really cool, and they have uh, they did a really great job with uh, protocols and everything, because it works in many different ways and. Uh, and uh, they showed me the, the demo how to run the websites completely, uh, <laughs> how to, to, to exactly share HTML, uh, CSS, and uh, JavaScript. So you can do that uh, with IPFS without doing anything special. It works out of the box. Yeah, I was just thinking if you're doing like peer to peer connections to solve um, latency issues, you've got like you know, seven minutes of latency or whatever crazy amount of time. Uh, you got to figure out who is actually on Mars because you don't want to do like a peer-to-peer -peer connection with somebody back Definitely on not. Earth. So, uh, how would you solve that problem? When one idea I thought I had, maybe you could measure like latency with a peer-to-peer -peer connection. If it takes too long, then you just go no. Uh, I don't think we'll have exactly that problem because uh, basically interplanetary interplanetary internet is the uh, bridge between uh, Earth internet and Mars internet. So. I don't think you will be able to do a peer-to-peer -peer connection from Mars to Earth because that will need to go through uh, NASA servers or whatever. No, I was saying like if you only want to do peer-to-peer -peer with people, other people on Mars. Yeah, and so you, you have some servers where uh, which will be in sync with Earth. With so uh, so like, how do you figure out who's on Mars? Because you know, somebody could lie and say, "Oh, I'm on Mars," but they're actually on Earth, and you wait. Seven yeah, of minutes, course. Or... That's uh, that's a security issue that we need to solve. It's okay. it's not easy to solve that. Uh, basically, uh, you can solve some of those problems with Merkle trees and validation of uh, of the data and everything. So, if someone tried to put something uh, in your files or something like that, you can validate that that is not valid. So, for example, you can use uh, private and public keys. Uh, so, uh, and uh, validate uh, the top node all the time and see that the same person shared that, that top node and just validate everything. But okay. that's just one thing. Any other Add questions? No? OK, that's it. I'll be around, so feel free to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>